morning and welcome back to Coffee Break. Happy Valentine's Week. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day this weekend and, you know, I think everyone's kind of getting into the spirit around here. Yeah, either the spirit of, I get to go on a date this weekend, or I'm single and I'm hanging out with all my girls this weekend. <laughs> So whatever your plans are, we thought we would take today and um, celebrate books about love. All different kinds of love. All different kinds of love. Yes. Obviously there's a whole romance genre, um, a very huge romance genre of books, <laughs> and um, that's very well represented, so we're going to avoid that and talk about different kinds of relationships. Yeah. So when you think about love, I think some of the first people that come to mind are your friends and family. And um, this book, actually, Friends of Liberty, um, is really interesting because it shows what happens when your love for your family and your love for your best friend kind of pull you in different directions, right? So this is set in Boston uh, right before the Revolutionary War. And um, the protagonist, Sally, comes from a patriot family, and her best friend, Kitty, is a loyalist. Mm. And so she's kind of, you know, everyone is, like, taking sides and things are escalating, and she's being pulled in these very two distinctly opposite directions. Um, and I just really like how it shows the depth of the relationships. Mm. You know, like, Sally, like, risks her life to break her brother out of this prison, and, you know, she's also willing to, like, give up everything and, like, you know, go be with Kitty and everything and, like, you know, uh, take her family side. And I just like that, you know, it really shows that strength of that bond there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also the, um, kind of the pure youthful understanding of love, that she's not necessarily clouded by their parents' separate views on things. Right. right? It could very easily be, I don't know what my parents think or what your parents think, but I know they disagree, and therefore I don't like you, and it, it's not that way. Yeah. Sometimes love can seem extra hard because people change, mm -hmm. and um, what does that do to your relationship? And sometimes people change, you know, not necessarily by choice. Like, in Still My Grandma, um, this girl has this beautiful relationship with her grandma. She has sleepovers with her and she talks about all the things they do together and then her grandma gets Alzheimer's and it really changes who she is. There's a lot of things she can't do anymore. She doesn't even really remember her relationship with her granddaughter. Yeah, you lose that memory base that you guys share. Yeah. One thing that I really like about this book is that it shows how the protagonist finds new ways to love her grandma and some of them are just um, kind of a different version of the things that they used to do together and some of them are new ways and she just she doesn't give up on her even though she's not really getting the love in return anymore right so this is really close to my heart because my grandma does have Alzheimer's <laughs> so there's um, it's really comforting to like see kind of a character go through the same things right and see so, how they make it work yeah and kind of show it's really hard to explain how you do love someone who doesn't remember your name. Right. So, I think a kind of love that people often forget about is the love that you have for pets, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, they're members of your family too. And me personally, I'm a dog person, but I really like this book, um, The Best Cat in the World. And this actually deals with the loss of a pet and getting a new one and like readjusting to that situation. And I just love the emotional complexity in yeah. this book. Yeah, because like, you know, Victor's just like devastated when his cat dies, like that's bad face. And you know, it's something that if you're a pet owner, you're gonna go through that because you always outlive your pets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I remember when my dog died, I kept like dropping food on the floor and I would like call to him to come pick it up and then I would have that moment, like that realization of like, he's not here to do that anymore, you know? So yeah, I mean, it handles his sense of loss like really well. Um, and then, yeah, when they get a new kitten, you know, you see him readjusting his expectations and, like, learning how to get along with this mm -hmm. new cat in his life. And, you know, eventually he does, like, grow to love this cat, you know, just mm -hmm. as well as the old one, but he still remembers the old one. So I like that it's got that, you know, that complexity and that idea that, like, just because you've lost something or someone that you've loved, like, doesn't mean that you can't feel that again. And, and feeling that, again, doesn't discount what you are still feeling for the lost. Right. 
Yeah, exactly. It's a lot for a picture book. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mariana and the Merchild is based on a folk tale from Chile. Mm-hmm. Um, Chile? <laughs> I think it's Chile. a little bit more correct. <laughs> um, and it really reminds me of, um, I mean, Mariana is basically a foster parent in this story. Um, they obviously don't call it that because it's a folk tale, but um, she um, finds this merchild that washes up during a storm. And so she um, takes care of her and knows that the mother is going to come looking for her at some point. Um, so she does meet the mother of the mer child who, who tells Mariana, please take care of her until the stormy season is done because I can't safely take her back home. And so it's, it, it shows um, this interesting relationship of a foster parent who needs to love and also let go and then a mother who's okay having a foster parent for her child. So it's just a really interesting um, way how that pans out and how it starts out with Mariana is very lonely and she um, she just wants someone to love, really. Yeah. So. yeah, and I mean, you know, that's interesting, like the idea of loving someone in spite of the fact that you know you're going to lose them. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know it's only temporary and still, you know, putting yourself out there and opening yourself up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah. really nice. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite parts, too, is when she first finds the mer child, it's immediately, like, the line is, and she loved her. And it was just so beautiful, of like, it's love at first sight with a child. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think typically love is something that we think of as, like, a relationship between two people, mm-hmm. right? But I think it's also something that you can have for something more abstract than that. Like, uh, my favorite artist biography is actually um, the Fantastic Jungles of Henri Rousseau. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, like, him pursuing his dream in spite of absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it starts off and it says, you know, he's always dreamed of being an artist, but he's never painted anything. And he's 40 years old and he's working as a toll collector. And he just drops everything and, like, goes off and becomes an artist anyway. And, you know, like, he spends decades painting these things and putting them in exhibits, and everyone says his work is garbage. And, like, nobody appreciates him. He keeps getting slammed by the critics, and he just doesn't give up. He still loves his art. Yeah. Doing art. Exactly. Like, it's just pursuing his passion and his dream in spite of absolutely everything. And, like, I don't know, that's a really tough call because it's not something that necessarily loves you back. Right. You know, and it's still just like pouring in all of your time and love and devotion into something mm-hmm. in the hopes that like, you know, it'll be fulfilling. Like that is the fulfillment for you. Mm-hmm. So I think kind of the, the main theme in all of these books about different kinds of love is loving through adversity and how, um, I mean, I, I think that's a maybe a common theme for love in books because we need that conflict, right, to have a good story. Yeah. But I think, especially with love, it, it really shows um, what love really means, right? Yeah. It's not just loving on happy days. Right. Well, because, you know, life itself is filled with conflict, mm-hmm. right? And it's like the, the true love, like the love in your life that lasts is the kind that will see you through that conflict and right. that won't go away. Right. So no matter what your relationship status is, uh, this weekend, take some time and celebrate the love you have in your life. I love you, Anna. I love you too, Catherine. Oh, yay. (laughs) So, happy Valentine's Day from Coffee Break. We'll see you next week. Partner. Do you love partner? (laughs) Maybe you're just a hyper-intelligent shade of the color blue. I don't know. (laughs)